Drop THX Panda is a premium closeback headphones aimed towards high fidelity audio, comfort and hopefully to be your next daily driver. Now this is not the first time that Drop co-op with THX. They actually did it a while back in 2017-18 to create a desktop class amplifier which have very good rating from the community. Mind you that audio files are not easily impressed. So can a second run be any good? Price-wise, these headphones will set you back 400 green bags or USD, whereas the optional add-on for the Panda Boom Mic is another 50 USD. I recommend getting that if you're doing a lot of teleconference as well as gaming. It surprisingly worked very well for Valorant in my opinion. Now, its closest competitors are the Sony WH-1000X Mark IV that I recently reviewed, Bosch QC35 Mark IIs, the Sennheiser Momentum 3 Wireless, all of them with ENC priced at 350 USD. They are cheaper by 50 USD compared to these babies right here with ANC. Now something to note right here is Magnetic Planner is not easy to produce and it's very costly to produce them in certain amount of quantities. So the justification right here is you may not get ANC but in return, you get high resolution audio or high fidelity to many people who want that keyword right there. Now, not to worry about the ANC part because the pass sound isolation is good. I'll talk about it a little bit more shortly. Now, design wise, this is very safe looking and boring design, which to many people means not standing out from the crowd that you have money to spend. Again, I like this design. It's so safe, it's so boring, it won't stand up. You are peacefully undisturbed. This has zero branding, like literally no THX logo, no drop logo, no panda logos, whatever logos, zero. It's pure blackout minimalistic look. It's super fine, fine, sexy, fine. And if I can describe this, it's literally like a fine, beautiful lady with a figure eight with beautiful badonka donk. <laughs> that's, that's the only way I can describe this. It's boring, but to me, it's sexy. Yummy. On to controls and IO ports. On the right side, on the back, it has this four-way directional control button for your media and volume controls. Press inwards is for the call and power controls. It's very easy and it's much more convenient in my opinion compared to those three button multi-array setup which I often mispress or misclick the wrong button. Under it is just the Type-C charging port. On the left side, it has this 3-pole 3.5mm headphone jack that can be phantom powered by your devices. You don't need to power on the headphones. In fact, if you power on the headphones and jack in the cable, it will auto off. So no worries on that. For connectivity, it uses Qualcomm Bluetooth 5.0 chip that supports aptX and also aptX adaptive. A few more codecs that I'm not familiar with, but for me, it supports Sony LDAC, which is more important and it's supported on my Sony A55 Walkman and Samsung S20+. Plus. On to ergonomics, the headphone weighs just shy of 380 grams. The Panda have a two-way swivel mechanism to help to conform to your head shape much better. The ear cup opening is 6.5 cm by 4 cm with a depth of 2.5 cm and overall thickness of 2 cm. The neat feature is the ear cups are spring loaded. It has this mini silicone bricks to hold it at the right position. For spectacle users like me, it posts no discomfort so far after 2 to 3 hours of long sessions like for Netflix or listening to acapella music so I can have my afternoon nap. Yes, I do often nap with my headphones. Oftentimes in the past with ANC, so I don't hear my neighbors shouting and screaming like some jungle people. But now I question, do I actually need ANC? Because this alone, even without ANC, provides very great sound isolation or noise blocking or passive sound isolation. There are many, many words for that from the environment. And it makes me question whether should I have ANC because when I compare the sound ceiling of these pandas with let's say my friend's Bosch QC32 Mark IIs or my recently reviewed Sony WH-1000 Mark IVs right here, the passive sound isolation on those are bad. This is better. This is like so thick, I can just show you guys. 
if I correct the horizon, if I look it, you can see that the pandas are slightly higher profile, thicker ear cups. This is so comfortable. Imagine a female thick thighs pressing against your ears. That is what pleasure me most. I mean, I mean, so sorry. Makes me feel comfortable right now. Now the headphones are meant to use upright. If you are a backwards or 45 degree user, the headphones will drop off because it's already balance centered. Now the clamping force on these ear cups is great. And to a point that I don't feel the weight from the headbands, unlike the Sony's right here, I do feel the weight test. You see the padding on the Sony's right here, thick. Whereas the padding on the headband right here is very thin. It's basically silicone with some air pockets and that's it. The headbands can extend just shy of 3 centimeters. Uncertain if it's plastic or metal bands, though I think it's metal from my Asian Kung Fu test. Our battery life test is based on the Samsung S20 Plus at the 4th volume bar with LDAC enabled. It lasts us a total of 29 hours. Hearing at low volume and LDAC off should extend the battery life further quite close to the rated 30 hours battery life. Before we jump into the microphone test, on the right side of the ear cup, it looks like it has a multi-microphone array for microphone noise cancelling. Optionally, the Panda Boom Mic is 4-pole type and comes with a splitter cable for audio in and audio out. The microphone can work for smartphone, MacBook, PC and latest gen console. On to Bluetooth microphone test, currently we are outdoor, there's a little bit of wind breeze and bird chipping and some traffic noises. So what you're hearing right now is the baseline coming from my Sony A7 Mark III camera with the Deity D4 microphone. So for our Bluetooth test, we are actually recording through the Filmic Pro app right here at its highest format without any post-processing. So let's bounce into the microphone right here. So testing 1 to 3, pink fluffy unicorn dancing on rainbow, she sells seashells on the sea shore. So there's a little bit of wind breeze, I hope the microphone does not pick it up. Let me know in the comments below what do you think of our outdoor test. For our second microphone setup, we'll be purely analog recording into the Zoom H1 recorder right here with the included splitter adapter cables by drop and the 4 pole cable into the headphones right here. So let's bounce into this microphone right here. There's a little bit of wind noise, birds chipping and traffic in the background, so testing 1 to 3. Pink fluffy unicorn dancing on rainbow, she sells seashells on the seashore. I'm going to stay quiet for 3 seconds, that will act as a baseline. So now we are back indoors to test the microphone wirelessly. I'm using the Filmic Pro app just like earlier, this time you can see the audio meter spiking. So testing 1 to 3. Pink fluffy unicorn dancing on rainbow, she sells seashells on the seashore. This is how I would sound like in a quiet indoor environment. Let's jump into the boom mic next. Now to the boom mic, I'm recording directly into the Zoom H1 recorder, testing 1 to 3. Pink fluffy unicorn dancing on rainbow, she sells seashells on the seashore. This is how I would sound like and I... No, it sounds much better than my Razer and SteelSeries gaming headphones, which that makes me muffle. This one is much clearer, so my teammates hear me less rumbling, more focused on my voice, and they get turned on. That's weird. Back to the review. This will be a Bluetooth lag test using just a pen. What I'm going to do is double click it upon firing backwards. That would be how much the lag will be presented in this Bluetooth device. And if you're not sure whether there's some lag, no worries, I'll leave some words on the bottom of this video to tell you how much lag there is. So let's start the test. When it comes to audio signature, the sound comes to life thanks to its Panda Plana driven drivers. It's long with that name, all you need to know is Magnetic Plana. And it's based on the Oppo PM series that is sold many years ago, has good credits but it's discontinued to this point. After checking out the web and also talking to some audiophile friends locally, I realized that it's closely specs to the Oppo PM3 series. Now one thing to note, back then, like a few years ago, it's not easy to drive Magnetic Plana. You have to carry a somewhat not so travel friendly M or M and Deck combo setup with snake oil voodoo cables that's too expensive just to sound right. The keyword right here is back then it needs to sound right. Whereas now, a few years later, Drop actually co-op with T1 
THX to put THX AAA amplifier. Of course, we're not getting a desktop class M that will be insanely bulky, but we are getting a mobile wireless version right here and they make it sound not right. Excellent. Things that make magnetic planar great. Realism, low distortion, and fast response time. So let's jump into my personal audio experience. Using Tian BOK, low bass has fast response and highly notable. It may not be strong in terms of volume, vibration, or bass drag like neodymium drivers, but I prefer the bass to support the song rather than overpowering the entire song. The vocals are sharp, super clean, crystal clear, more audible than the bass, which I prefer a lot more. For Pia Mia Do It Again, the bass has good response and notable. At the 2 minute and 5 second mark of the song, the bass fades fast. Again, magnetic planner can't do much. Neodymium drivers are better at bass vibration drags. The vocals in the song is the cleanest and sharpest and distinct in any headphones that I heard before. This is coming from a Sony Z7 Mark II user, by the way. More importantly, this song is challenging for neodymium dynamic drivers as the vocals tends to be muddy due to the bass involvement. That's why Magnetic Planner is better at this. Better vocals, less bass, better clarity. For violin, the raindrop, the piano and violin sounds sharp, very certain with the right high pitch tones. Zero distortion at the highs, very clean. The bass supports the song and does not pollute the highs. That's the keyword right there. For Petatonic See True, when it comes to Mitch Grassi's high pitch male tenor vocals, it sounds sharp and right. Beatboxing and group humming is less audible than Mitch vocals, which is how the song is intended to be. Conclusion time. Now these headphones right here may not have ANC like my Sony's, but again the passive sound isolation is comparable, is great. It's not one to one to ANC, but it's good enough to block majority of the junk noises from your surrounding. I prefer to pick something of high resolution audio experience over ANC any day. Thus, this became my daily driver. Now, initially I was worried about the weight, but the clamping force is good enough on my ears that I don't feel the weight on the head, top of my head. Now, I'm Asian Bill again. I have smaller skull size. If you're white, black, European, Caucasian, whatever the keyword is, you guys have bigger skull, the clamping pressure will be significantly more, much better than me. Again, I'm not calling out names, not racist right here. This is genetics, biology, science you guys benefit more than us Asian with small body size. Now, when it comes to sound signature, I have told you what I have experienced, how the sound signature is. It sounds hard selling, but assure you I have done more than 120 to 150 reviews when it comes to audio in this channel. So take my word for it. It's excellent. It's my top one right now. It beat my Sony Z7 Mark IIs, period. And that I had to carry an external M and deck to just make it sound right. Yucks. I regretted my investment back then. But again, this is my new baby right here. Now, when it comes to sound signature, it's a softer U shape experience in terms of mids, highs, and lows. And when I say softer U shape, it's sit between balance and brights. And I prefer this sound signature over those neodymium bass, which is often balanced and extra bass or bass. I prefer better vocals, better high range because I like to listen to Jackie Ivanko, Frank Sinatra, piano, violin, saxophone. It makes me relax. So this kind of sound songs will fit for these headphones will fit for me. Now at 400 USD, holy hell, this is very expensive, but I assure you it is worth every bloody penny spent on these babies right here. Again, it sounds hard sell. You can take my word for it or just close the video right now. But I can assure you this, that this should be your first headphones and let it be your daily driver to a point that it becomes a baseline for future headphones that comes out. So next time, if you intend to upgrade or your friends say, is it good enough? Let them try this pair. And if they say this is better, you know the other headphones is not comparable to this baby right here. It's worth every penny. If you can't afford it, save up as much as you can. Wait a few weeks longer, a month later. Get this, you will not regret it. That's my take. So comment below what other high fidelity audio stuff I should review next. I'll try to arrange from there. Comment below where you're from and 
do you think I should open a Patreon page so we can do more of this audio file stuff? Let me know in the comments below. Till then, if you're interested in these videos right here, links in the video description where you can get them. And I'll see you guys in the next audio file review. Bye guys.